He is the number one. Yep, that's the right? high That's mark. the highest you can get. That's where he is. He'd like to continue on that pace. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. This fielded at the two. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. The Indy offense at the line and set to go. And they had to wait a long time to get the football back. Probably not what you were hoping for when you got an offense at Summit. Agreed. What you were looking for is the defense getting the ball back pretty quickly, right? Hoping for a three and out. So that didn't happen. You can't yell at your D for that. They've got to take care of their own business and reestablish themselves now that they're back on the field. They'll run on first down with Marlon Mack. And he'll be taken down as that will take us to the end of the first quarter of play. Through one quarter, 14-7, our score. Everybody scoot up, scoot up. Caught left side by Hilton. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. That one, a first down pickup of eight. First down, it's Mack. He finds some open field here. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. 16 yards to pick up there. The Colts have a first down. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Now the set. His throw incomplete. Eric Ebron, the big tight end, is intended target. And that'll bring up second down. They'll try again from the 36 on second and 10. To throw is Brissett. Looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and 10. Out of the gun, Brissett. And he hits his tight end, Ebron. And they're able to get this one past the 30 to the 25-yard line. 12 yards there as they keep this drive rolling. It's another first down. Now it's Mack, draw play. And not much of a hole there as he gets it down to about the 24-yard line. In on the tackle, it was Duke Edgefor. On second down. It's Hines, and he'll get about five here as he'll take this down inside the 20-yard line. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. They run the draw play with Mack. And he takes it down to the 13 and picks up the first. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. On first down, they'll stay with Mack on the ground. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Play fake, Brissett. Able to shake him off. Fighting his but now he's swallowed up and taken down. Zach Cunningham. Give him the credit for the sack and a loss of 14 yards. It's third and long for Brissett. And he's going to go down again. J.J. Watt, he's the one to get him, and that is sack number seven for him on the year. That's three sacks now, and that's not much of a surprise to me, nor should it be to you. This team... They lead the league in sacks. Yeah, they do. This is something that we are starting to witness time and time again. And his kick is good. Not by much. It was leaking oil in the end, but he tucks it in the bottom right corner. Vinatieri, the NFL's oldest active player, also the league's all-time leading scorer, past Morton Anderson last year. Yeah, he turned 46 in December of 2018. He really can't see it in his leg. Maybe in the beard. You can see it in the beard. Maybe in the beard. That's about it. But as long as he's booting him the way he's booting him, keep going, big guy. The Texans offense ready to go here for their next drive. They're starting to put some space here. You know, first quarter, they didn't look so hot offensively. This second quarter, though, they've looked really good. 
they've jumped in the saddle in a big way now, and now they're in full gallop. I mean, before, kind of cantering around a little bit, right, trying to feel their way, not getting done what they wanted to. But somehow they put it together with play calling, execution, and now there's a pretty big gap. And they'll look to make that gap even bigger here. He's got the first down and more inside the 40. And finally brought down at the 38. A fresh set of downs on a gain of 13 there for the Texans. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. From the shotgun again to Elliott. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. Jamal Sheard on the stop. They'll fake the handoff. Now Watson. Fuller brings it in over the middle. And they'll get him to the ground. He has another first down at the Colts' 13-yard line. Watson in the offense going to come up first and 10. And he's a perfect 6-for-6 six six here to start the ball game. Now Elliott. And he'll be dropped at about the 11 after only a yard. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive. And once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. And they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensive. In trouble, and he'll go down back at the 12. Danico Autry able to get in there and drop him behind the line. Throwing on third down, Watson. And he'll take this one in for a Texans touchdown. An 11-yard touchdown. And the Texans push further out in front. All the receivers in the league are plenty good enough. Otherwise, they wouldn't make it in the NFL. But the ones that go to the Pro Bowl, they have refined route running ability. Fairbairn now to add the extra point. It's good, and it's 21-10. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. Now here's the signal caller getting ready to lead this offense again. What can they do now, Charles, to make sure this highlight montage doesn't continue to show more pressure and pressure and pressure? You feel like it always comes back to leverage, don't you? Who is going to win that battle of the offensive and defensive lines? Low man wins, we talk about that, but we think about it in a running game. But guess what? The same thing happens when you're trying to pass protect. Are you low? Are you balanced? Are you in a position where the pass rush won't bowl you over on their way back to the quarterback? They've got to reestablish that in order to try and keep their man upright. Because they have been bowled over a lot so far in this one. Give him 10 yards there, and about by the nose of the football, he's going to have a first down. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. They'll run with Mack. And he'll lose yardage. Brought down at the 32. That's going to wind up a loss of a full three yards on first down. Now on second and 13. Brissett. They'll run the screen with Mack. That one, a gain of 20 in a first down. When you run a screen pass really well, you got to like the look of it because so many parts come together to make it work well. The offensive linemen where they're faking people out, the back slipping out there, catching the football, then all of them going together as one unit downfield, a really nice pickup. 
A reminder, once we hit halftime, as we do all season, we'll send it down to Jonathan Coachman in Orlando. He'll have all the stats and scores from games in progress around the NFL. The best multitasker in the business, the coach. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 18. Brissett going to lead his guys up first and 10. And he's 4 for 4 now, throwing the ball to start the drive. That's going to be caught at the 10-yard line. And he can't quite get there. Tackled down at the 1. Had the gain here to the previous play, and it's better than 40 yards total. And a lot of people ask the same question all the time. Why do we see so many slants in the red zone? Well, the window. And he's got his man. It's Hilton for the Colts touchdown. T.Y. Hilton with touchdown number seven on the year. As his guys are back within a single score. Finitary able to tack on the PAT. And it's now 21-17. And here's Vinatieri now to kick it away after the touchdown. This is taken at his four. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Well, a couple of good division battles coming up in primetime this weekend, starting tonight with Sunday Night Football, Eagles and Cowboys from AT&T Stadium in Arlington. Then tomorrow on Monday night, it's the defending champs, the Patriots on the road at MetLife Stadium to take on the Jets. Two not to miss to close out week six. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. First down yardage on the first play of the drive, give him 14. First down. On first down, it's Watson. The hookup on the right side to Hopkins. A pickup of 11 and a Texans first down. Back to back good plays have him on the move on first down. A shotgun snap for Watson. Caught left side, Hopkins. 23 yards on the play. I like that one, partner. They go back-to-back -back with excellent gains, and really it shouldn't be a surprise who they were throwing the ball to. He's their best guy. Yeah, we knew that they would get him involved early. They're doubling down on getting him involved early. Don't be surprised if they'll come right back to him again. They haven't shown the propensity to be able to stop him. Off of play action, it's Watson. That is caught inside the five. And he's brought down after a very nice game. Now the Texans will burn the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 18 seconds to go in the first half. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. They'll try to run this one in. Into a mass of bodies, and I think they held him out. They did. Now the Texans will use one of their two remaining timeouts as they'll stop it with 14 seconds to go in this first half. One man in the backfield, that's Elliott on second and goal. He's going to get it running right. And he's in for the score. Touchdown, Texans. Ezekiel Elliott. In the final seconds of the first half, and the Texans push further out in front. And that's a lead that excites a team as they head into the half. Good way to finish things off. Yeah, able to extend that lead, and you always say it. That can totally change the complexion of half number two. Yeah, it changes your morale, changes your outlook. But even before that, let's see if they decide to kind of squib kick or what they're going to do on the kickoff, because you don't want to give up a big play right before the half ends. Good point. And 
That'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. The offense back out there at the line, ready for their next drive. And from this spot in the field with the clock where it's at, you think we're just going to see a knee and that's it? And I think in this situation, that's the proper play. But we do know there's some risk takers out there that may want to take one more shot before the clock runs out. Officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that one looked pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a 5-yard or a 15-yard inadvertent or not. Now, it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. The offense now at the line, ready for their next drive. Time remaining for likely one final play. You're on your side of the field, but, you know, heck, maybe you throw one up 50-plus yards, see what happens. Don't forget that taking the knee is the right play to make because just get out of there, you regroup, you start over. But if you're going to take the shot, you do have a chance of either making the play happen or picking up a deep pass interference call. And remember, it's the NFL. You get yardage. It's not just a 15-yard play. You could have something big here. Let's see if they take the shot. And now this throw incomplete, and that is how this first half will come to an end. So we have reached halftime here in an 11-point contest. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. A lot to get to here as some of the division races starting to take shape as we look around the NFL here in week number seven. We'll begin up in the Queen City at Paul Brown Stadium. Jacksonville on the road to take on Cincinnati. And those two are tied up as they play the second quarter. We'll stay in the NFC North as we head over to the Motor City to check on the Lions at home in Detroit. And it's the visiting Minnesota Vikings who are out in front. Kirk Cousins has thrown a touchdown pass. Lastly, let's get up to Buffalo to check on the Bills. And in that one, it's the visiting Dolphins who are out in front. The Dolphins still in a dogfight, but this would be a good victory for them if they could get it. Meanwhile, in our game, no shortage of offense as each team has been able to move the ball effectively. Will the defenses show up in the second half? We'll find out. We give it back to our commentator, Brandon 